Let's get started. Welcome to PIP Connect. My name is Andy Hudson, and thank you very much for attending today's webinar, The Power of Motivation, How Merchandise Rewards Can Improve Performance. Before we introduce our panelists, uh, again, we'd like to hear your name and where you're joining us from, so put that in the chat, and we'll keep saying hello to people as they join. So Mitch Berman from Acceleration, welcome. And also, please continue to uh, chat with any questions or comments you have throughout the webinar. So we'll also be holding a drawing today uh, for an amazing gift, courtesy of our preferred gifting partner, Incentive Concepts. So make sure to stick around throughout the webinar to learn about this wonderful gift. Uh, here's an overview of today's webinar. First of all, hopefully you're having a great day and fantastic and productive week. And again, I'm Andy Hudson. I'm the moderator today. And the overview on the agenda for today's session, you can see here on the screen, we have two amazing panelists who you'll uh, meet in just a moment. Uh, we will also be sharing some polls throughout the webinar. We'd love for you to partic participate in the polls. Uh, they always generate some interesting ideas and questions. So make sure to uh, put your thoughts in there about the power of motivation and please utilize the Q&A, like I mentioned, for any chats, any questions, and we can ask those throughout. We will have a Q&A session at the end. And we do want to be respectful of everyone's time, so we anticipate that this will last no longer than 30 minutes. Uh, with that, let's welcome our two panelists for today. We have Alex Richman, who is the founder and president of ALR Consulting and also the executive director of Nagano Rewards. And we have Aaron Cook, who is a sales manager for our preferred gifting partner, Incentive Concepts. Good afternoon, Aaron. Good afternoon, Alex. Hey, Andy. Nice to be here. Wonderful. Thanks. And Aaron, if you could just unmute yourself, because I'm going to start with you, my friend. So uh, first of all, can you give a, a short introduction of yourself, Aaron, please? Sure. Absolutely. Thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. So uh, I am currently a territory sales manager with Incentive Concepts. Uh, I am based in the St. Louis area, which is where uh, our company is headquartered as well. Currently cover the Midwest as well as the Northwest. Um, and like I say, going on about eight years with Incentive Concepts prior to that, had several years experience in the industry with another company um, and just uh, just have a ton of fun talking about motivation and rewards and corporate gifting and all things that go with it. All right. Well, thanks, Aaron. And uh, I know you're going to step aside because we're going to focus on Alex in the first half and you'll come back during the half, uh, second half. So thanks for joining us, Aaron. And hello to Lincoln Smith from HMI Performance Incentives. Thanks for putting that in the chat. And, Alex, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I'm going to stop the screen share here for a moment, um, and we're just going to kind of talk and have like an interview format, if that's okay. Sure. Sounds okay, good. great. Um, you've been involved in sourcing merchandise, brand name rewards, and strategic partnerships in the B2B segment for almost 20 years, or maybe even more than 20 years. Can, but can you give attendees a little self-introduction, maybe tell us a little bit about yourself, your family, your interests? Yeah, sure. So yeah, I've been in the industry for about 20 years, and uh, I am based out of Philadelphia. I've got a, a family with two daughters that are nine and 12. Um, and, uh, you know, I love playing soccer and beating up my, my body that can't handle it and uh, enjoy working with people in this industry from all around the world and meeting uh, new people and learning, you know, what the incentive industry brings in the U.S. and in international in all corners of the globe. Wonderful, wonderful. And I know from the little I know about you, uh, I understand you're really interested in kind of data and reports and different white papers and studies. Um, what does the latest data say about incentive programs out there in the in, in the incentive world? Yeah, so luckily there's a, there's, there's a lot of data out there that's starting to get out there. And there was a new survey that was a uh, research that was just released literally in the last couple of weeks by the Incentive Federation that basically said that businesses or US businesses are, are spending $176 billion annually to motivate and recognize their employees or channel partners or customers utilizing award points, gift cards, trips, travel, merchandise, experiential rewards, which is just a, a massive number um, per, per year. And it's actually grown about 50% since this was last run in, uh, 2016 and you know three of those years are during COVID so it really shows you how much the industry is growing and how important um, incentives and, and for sales and loyalty programs are. Um, it also you know re revealed that you know 92 percent of the companies with revenues of five million um, or more are using at least one form of non-cash incentive programs. 
Um, and these types of programs could be sales incentive, employer rewards, channel distribution, employee incentives, uh, all types of those programs. Um, obviously, you know, the, the largest part of those of that 176 billion is, is sales incentives and employee rewards. Um, you know, and, and the increases for sales incentives alone, it's 52 billion this year, which is about 130% increase from 2016. Um, so again, a huge increase in sales incentive of those, uh, of that 52 billion, you know, 50% of those companies are offering merchandise, which is a slight increase uh, over 2016. And, you know, within that merchandise programs, half of that are saying that they're going to be significantly increasing their spend um, over the next year. Uh, so there's a lot of opportunity within the sales incentive programs. And then even if you look at the other programs like channel distribution incentives, employee incentives, they're all offering, you know, you know, around 40 to 50 percent of their programs merchandise and are all expecting to increase that significantly over the next year. Wonderful. Wonderful. So 176 billion, if I got that number right. Uh, yeah. For, for, and uh, let, let's all hope that we have a little percentage of that, of course. But uh, let's get to our next question here. Um, why do you use merchandise for incentive programs uh, that, you, that you run? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, obviously people are using merchandise and gift cards, but, you know, the, the feeling that you get from getting merchandise is just so much different. You know, when somebody gets a gift card, they may pocket it, they might put it in a wallet, uh, and then they'll spend it eventually, or they'll spend it on multiple things, and it's just forgotten. When you are working with merchandise, um, and you're getting that TV or that iPad or that blender, people are going to love to brag about it. You know, they're going to they're going to be at a, they're going to have a party, and people are going to be over and they say, you know, you know, I got this TV from working hard on my company. Um, I, uh, excuse me, there's a uh, lawnmower in the back, so I apologize for <laughs> the, the bad timing. But right. um, yeah, so they just, they're going to brag, they're going to share this excitement that they received these pro that they got these products through, through doing something good at, at, at their job. They're going to post pictures with their family, they're going to post it on social media. It's going to just, it's going to invoke happiness and emotion. Um, among the person and among the family, knowing that when they work hard, they they are being recognized for, for doing this. And when they are reliving that feeling of achievement, they want to do more. Um, it's, it, you're creating a positive sentiment around yourself, around the brand uh, that you work for. And it just you just feel better when you're getting that merchandise item rather than when you get that gift card. So those are some of the reasons why people really want to include merchandise in their programs. That's wonderful. And you're talking kind of merchandise in general, but let's talk about like what, how do you decide what type of merchandise to offer for various programs? Yeah. So, you know, it's really helpful to kind of know your client that you're working with, whether it's a, a employee program, a loyalty program. And sometimes that can be hard to get the demographics of your end client, but the more you can get, the more you can be specific about what you're offering. Are they, you know, are they in the office? Are they out of the office? Are they white collar? Are they blue collar? Are they male, female? You know, the, the more demographics you know about your client and client, the better you know to find those right products. Is it domestic? Is it international? Domestic and international can be very different programs. Um, products that are relevant in the U.S. are not products that are relevant in Brazil or in Singapore. The cost of living is different. Um, you know, if you're in India, you're, the cost of living is so much cheaper and, and people may want products that are more for everyday living, whereas in U.S. or Europe or in the U.K., they want larger, larger ticket items um, that they really can sort of brag about. Um, other things that help you decide what type of merchandise is important is pricing. Um, you know, are you passing those costs through to the, um, to the client? You know, are you charging margins? Do you need to, you know, do you need to work with the brands direct to get better pricing? Are you okay working with e-commerce partners to get thousands of items that maybe you're sacrificing points, but, you know, you, it, you're just passing through those costs and that's all that matters. Um, other things that help you decide what type of merchandise is 
what type of program are you going to offer? Uh, I think traditionally we've seen a lot of programs that are in the sales incentive uh, are point collections. So you do a good deed or you reach a sales goal, you get 50 points, you get $50 and you keep accumulating those and you can spend it more. I'm seeing a little bit more of a trend towards more collection type catalogs and not offering thousands of items, but you know, you, you, you've got 50 people that, that you think deserve a, an equivalent of $100. You give them a quick catalog that says, congrats, here's 50 items, choose your item and, and, and it's done. And there's no waiting, people are more likely to redeem those items. Um, so it's very important to, to understand and work with your supplier and understand the trends, understand your clients and the demographics so you can choose the right merchandise. Wonderful, wonderful. So very important. And we do want to hear from uh, our attendees today. So we're going to have our first poll, if that's okay, Alex. And uh, we want to hear from you now. So let's go ahead and launch it here. And here's the question. Where have your incentive programs experienced growth in the last five years? So hopefully some of you are involved in the industry. And we want to kind of understand where uh, in the incentive industry you're uh, the growth has been in the last five years. Is it with sales incentives? Is it in channel or distributor incentives? Customer loyalty, the travel, incentive travel, which is which kind of took a hit, obviously it took a big hit during COVID, uh, or employee incentives. So we're going to leave this poll open for just about 15 more seconds, and then we'll look at the results together. And Alex, maybe you can, uh, uh, maybe we'll be surprised with the results, or maybe it'll come in what, exactly what we're thinking here. But um, Five more seconds for that poll and we'll end it and we'll look at the results together. So here we go. Uh, looks like the uh, employee incentives is the number one there with 45%. Does that kind of fall in line with what you're thinking with the latest COVID and uh, lockdown type type of environment yeah. that we're in? Or Yeah, certainly. I think what you're seeing is that with COVID initially, you had a lot of people that were let go and budgets were slashed, but now you're seeing that come back, you know, in spade because um, you've got to figure out ways to keep these employees engaged and motivated and, 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 and stay with their company. It, the cost to retrain and rehire people is way too much. So you're seeing a lot of companies that didn't have employee incentives before added into their program. They may not be as big as they used to be, but you're definitely seeing a lot more programs. Okay, for sure. So I uh, appreciate you taking that poll. Let's move on. And just as a reminder, for those of you attending, we are going to be giving away a nice gift uh, courtesy of Incentive Concepts a little bit later. And we have Aaron Cook joining us too a little bit later as well. Um, but I'm sure you work with several different merchandise suppliers. And when you work with a merchandise supplier, what are some important things that you need to know about that company? Yeah, I mean, I think you need to know, um, you know who they are you know, what are they offering? Are they offering popular brands? Are they offering five brands and 10 SKUs? Are they offering hundreds of brands and thousands of SKUs? And every, every company has a need for a different type of supplier. Some people want somebody that um, they can connect through API or web servers, or some just want to, you know, send them PDF files. So you have to pick the right supplier that can work with your needs. You know, customer service is important. Um, can they do promotions? Can they provide you tracking as soon as possible? You know, is everything in your warehouse or are they shipping it from a third party? A lot of people will want more control um, or make sure that their, their partner has more control over how it's shipped, what's in the packaging. So they want most of the stuff sent from the warehouse of your partner. Um, you know, you don't want to have to hire a lot of staff to manage this. You're asking your suppliers to be an extension of you and help you they're the ones that know what's going on, what's being redeemed, um, what promotions they can offer. So they're looking for the supplier to really help them with that information so that they don't have to do it and really just help them guide them in terms of what they should be adding. So um, those are the things that you really want to look for in a supplier. So it sounds like you're saying more of a partner and less of a vendor, um, yeah. if I'm getting that right. So that's a wonderful, wonderful point. And, um, uh, piggybacking on that question, how do merchandise rewards stay relevant and grow as we look into the future? Yeah, so I think, you know, we look into the future. I think, you know, you got to stay creative. You got to be spontaneous. Some people are just giving quick gifts. It doesn't have to be expensive. Uh, it can just, you know, quick recognition tools. It's not always about, you know, accumulating all those points and, and waiting for them to redeem. Just you know, be spontaneous and just give them a, a quick little item, a quick little 
you know, headset or something or something for their office. The other thing is how do you link with a virtual employee? You know, virtual employees are not going away. So you've got to continue to find products that will help them make their home office, you know, more helpful, easier, you know, bigger screens, a better chair. Um, how do they, you know, fit wellness into their, into their life? Um, you can always learn more about what the employee wants. I mean, you know, how many iPads does a person really need? You got to find out what else, what else, what else, what else is interesting to them, and 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 survey them if you can to find out what you're missing, um, and see why they're not redeeming some of their products. And I think that you know, one of the bigger things that we're starting to see is mental health, and how is that going to fit into merchandise and into this industry? I know it's part of wellness, but how does merchandise play a part into this mental health category? Are there merchandise items that there? Is it is it just wellness products? How do you really um, recognize your employees and care about their mental health so that you know they're happy, your program's happy, your suppliers are happy, and and and, under, and figure out how to incorporate um, incentives and merchandise into those programs. Wonderful. Well, thank you so very much, Alex. Um, but before we bring on our next panelist, we'd like to do another poll. So let's launch that next poll. And the question here is, uh, why do you think, or what do you think are the most common reasons companies offer merchandise rewards to their employees or customers? Um, is it uh, a trophy value type uh, gift? Is it to invoke happiness in the employee? Um, is it so the employees can brag or boast about the company they work for? Uh, increase engagement, which is what you were just referring to, or maybe retention or some other reason. Um, Alex, do you have um, any insight into uh, these categories and which one you think is the most effective when it comes to maybe engagement or retention? Or I mean, they're all sort of, you know, they're all to increase engagement and improve retention. You know, I yeah. think that, you know, people are offering merchandise rewards to probably uh, invoke happiness, you know, in increase engagement, you know, all these things. I mean, the trophy value, you know, braggability and happiness is all part of that trophy value. And ultimately, your goal is to increase engagement around your employees and keep them uh, engaged and retain them. So they're sort of all sort of work together in, 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 in cohesion, really. Yeah, so very much in concert. Well, thank you very much. You've been very uh, uh, kind of you to share your knowledge with us today. You're going to step aside now and we're going to bring Aaron Cook back on. So Alex, thank you so much. And we'll bring you back on near the end, but let's uh, screen share again here and, and bring Aaron on. Hey, Aaron, how's it going so far? Hey, good, Andy, good. All right, any any comments about what you've heard from Alex so far? Uh, no, I mean, a, a, a lot of stuff that uh, that we, we've known or that I've learned over the years, but also great to hear how, how much the industry is growing. And again, to his point about you know, a couple things, COVID as well as um, remote work has definitely changed the way we need to think about how programs are run and how we're going to try and make those employees that are um, not in the office every day still feel um, appreciated and part of the team. Okay, fantastic. Well, you have a little bit of a presentation to go through here, and I want to encourage our attendees to also use the chat to continue to engage with us. If you have any questions, feel free to put them right there in the chat. Um, but you have a presentation here um, that you want to get to, so let's uh, let's go to the first slide. And oops, sorry about that. I went too far ahead. Why don't you go ahead, Aaron? Sure, no problem. So just a little bit about Incentive Concepts. We're a corporate gifting company. Uh, we've been around over 30 years. Um, but really, you know, this slide here kind of talks about who we are, what we do, uh, our passion, delivering the best, better, uh, our niche, providing name brand merchandise for corporate gifting and rewards, and then our promise, same day responses. So, you know, really from start to finish in communication with that uh, client, we, we want to kind of walk them through the whole process, make sure we're in constant communication with them, and ultimately make sure that whatever gifts we're uh, delivering, they're getting the job done, they're presented in a way um, that really encourages the employee or the customer or the client or whoever the intended, intended uh, recipient is. Great. So kind of move on to the, to the next slide there. Uh, you know, when we look at reasons to reward, um, you know, first we'll talk about employees or internally, 
Um, years of service, again, that, that is, seems like it's been a growing category, uh, whether it's one year, every five years, uh, as companies struggle to maintain and hold on to their workforce. Um, it, it definitely goes a long way to appreciate those uh, employees that have been there with you for a, for a long time. Safety, when you're looking at industrial and, and some of the manufacturing jobs out there, uh, safety is a huge part of that. Um, and how do we get people to be a little more uh, aware of what they're doing on a daily basis and taking those precautions? Obviously, job performance, exceeding sales goals, those kind of tie into those sales incentives that have traditionally been uh, the strongest area of merchandise reward programs. And the last one there, you know, holidays and other personal milestones. Um, as we go into fourth quarter, we're all going to be thinking about holiday gifting. That's obviously the big one. Um, you know, but don't forget about other personal milestones for your employees. Maybe it's uh, a child that has graduated high school or uh, graduated college. Maybe uh, it's their first child. Maybe it's a milestone birthday of 40 or a 50. Um, all good reasons to um, be able to show your appreciation to those employees. Um, if you go on to the next slide there, Andy, um, we also don't want to forget about rewarding customers and channel partners. So who are those external people? And again, um, you know, customer loyalty, how are you ensuring that your top clients are going to continue to do business with you and not start shopping around or not go elsewhere? Uh, if you're in, uh, you know, depending on what type of company, maybe you're uh, selling merchandise of your own and you're looking at some type of gift with purchase to help move a new product or help showcase a new product. Dealer loader programs are huge in the food and beverage industry. How do we, we get a new product? How do we get that shelf space? How do we sell in a new product? How do we uh, take advantage of a holiday season where we want our product front and center? Um, and then again, throwing in holidays and other personal milestones again, uh, you know, don't forget about your external partners uh, when you're looking at motivation and reward programs. Um, and then if we look at what to reward, um, <clears throat> you know, we want to consider brands that are leaders in their categories. We want products that are aspirational. Uh, again, the easiest way is to think of, um, man, I really want, I, I really want this, but I'm, I'm not going to justify paying for this, so I'm going to get this lower level product, right? And so what we at Incident Concepts focus on are uh, brands that are leaders in those categories that, you know, hey, I would love to have a pair of, pair of Bose headphones, but I'm not going to be able to afford it right now. But that's the type of item that is going to encourage and motivate somebody. Um, the other thing with Incident Concepts, it's uh, we offer a ro robust variety of categories. So we have over 30 different brands. Um, we'll kind of go through a few of the categories there, but everything from outdoor to fashion to electronics. Uh, and one more point to add in that, that uh, Alex touched on a bit there too, is uh, when you're looking at what to reward, especially the last couple years, um, make sure you have a partner that can communicate to you uh, what is actually available, right? So um, the last couple of years, supply chain has been hit hard. Uh, the last thing you want to do is be offering a product that, um, you know, the recipient selects and then it's not going to be delivered for six months. So at Incentive Concepts, we work very closely with all of our brand partners, uh, making sure that we know availability. We can communicate that out to our clients and say, you know what, I know you want this particular product, but let's hold off for about three months until it gets back into a little bit better inventory position. Wonderful, wonderful. And I know there's a few slides coming up here. I just want to be cognizant of people's time. So can we just yep. quickly go quickly go through the next slides to talk about um, each of them real fast? Or? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, again, just highlighting some of our categories. And these are uh, some things we're featuring for holiday gifting coming up. Uh, Bows, obviously, if you're uh, if you have business travelers, the noise canceling headphones you have to have, um, the Bluetooth speakers, uh, they work great as an office accessory. So uh, you can do the um, uh, voice call on those for speakerphone, things like that. Um, going down to the next slide, fitness and wellness has been a huge push. Um, Hyper Ice is part of that new category we call tech wellness. 
Um, so some really innovative products that you're seeing used at the PGA Tour, NBA, NFL levels. Um, getting into uh, recreation. So we work with Escalade Sports. It's all about family fun. It's outdoor games. It's game tables. Um, it, it's really about, um, you know, just kind of enjoying things at home a little bit. Um, going on next to uh, travel, Briggs and Riley uh, is a great partner of ours with luggage. Again, luggage is one of those things you don't necessarily want to purchase. Um, but it's great to have a nice set of luggage, so it makes for a great reward. Um, kitchen enhancements, um, all sorts of cookware and bakeware. King Sean is shown there. I actually work for a company that uh, I was fortunate to receive a holiday gift last year of a set of knives and was able to replace the 10-year-old knives that I got for my wedding. So, <laughs> so they're still on our counter, and, uh, it, it, and that was an absolutely great gift. Uh, and then finally, fashion forward. So Kate Spade handbags, um, you know, we really get into some fashion brands with handbags, jewelry, sunglasses, things like that. So uh, we kind of skipped through there real quick, but I uh, just want to touch on that last slide, um, if you will, Andy, and that's uh, ways to reward. So again, um, not every program is going to be the same. So maybe uh, you need someone who can drop ship that product for you to remote workers. Uh, maybe you need a gift box. Maybe you want to jazz it up a little bit. Um, maybe you want us to ship in bulk and you can deliver it to your team personally. Um, maybe you want to add a logo to it. We have tons of things we can add a logo to. Uh, maybe you're getting back to uh, in-person meetings and you're having an uh, annual meeting or sales kickoff and you want to do some type of on-site gifting uh, at that meeting. We have staff and programs available uh, where we can be on site and have that product right there ready to hand out. So, um, you know, a lot of different solutions. Um, I think our contact information is on the next slide. Uh, don't hesitate to reach out. We'd love to uh, talk to you about what your needs are, how we can put together some options for you uh, and uh, find a program that fits. Wonderful, wonderful. And let's finish this off with one last poll and we can bring Alex back on. If you could turn on your camera and audio again, Alex. But uh, we just saw some different categories that Incentive Concepts offers. So if you receive a holiday gift from your employer, which category that Aaron highlighted would be the most attractive to you? Would it be the audio and tech category like headphones or Bluetooth speakers? Maybe it's those fitness or wellness category, uh, new luggage with travel or fashion. Uh, maybe it's recreation games. So go ahead and uh, and put your put your, uh, your answers in there. I think they're all fabulous categories. Alex, do you have a couple of favorites? Well, I mean, I always like audio and tech and uh, fitness and wellness. I think it'll be interesting to see we're you know, getting into a recession, whether or not these categories will change a little bit and people will maybe choose to get products that are either aspirational as uh, as Aaron says, or things that maybe people need a, a little bit more often. Okay, wonderful. Let's end that poll and see what the uh, results were. Uh, looks like it's pretty even across the way with audio and tech, fitness and wellness, but travel and luggage seems to be the highest. Kind of indicates maybe people are thinking they're going to be traveling a little bit more in the next six months. Hey, Aaron? <laughs> That's right. And uh, as, as I mentioned, uh, a lot of people are, you know, quick to rush out and get those new audio and tech products. Um, it's some of those travel and luggage and housewares where people tend to hang on and get as much use out of them as they can. And uh, so they become perfect rewards because it's not something you would typically want to go out and buy for yourself. Wonderful, wonderful. We're going to open it up for questions. I know we're a little bit over schedule here, but if there are any questions, put them in the chat um, and just let us know exactly what you're asking and we can ask Aaron or uh, Alex. Um, and while those questions are coming in, if there are any, I do want to mention that every attendee uh, it will be entered into a drawing for a gift of Bose Quiet Comfort 35 II headphones. Thank you, Aaron, for donating these. We appreciate it. Yep. And, uh, I'm sure those will come in real handy for somebody that uh, is lucky enough to win, won't they? Oh, yeah. And uh, be happy to get back out, start traveling, use those on the plane and uh... Or vice versa, you can use them when uh, the lawnmower starts up outside your home office. 
<laughs> okay. Well, we're all working from home, aren't we? So we got to deal with that type of uh, challenge. But uh, um, I want to thank everybody for attending. And thank you, Alex. Thank you, uh, Aaron. And thank you to everyone for joining today. Again, we'll be drawing a name from somebody who attended to win these wonderful headphones, courtesy of our preferred gifting partner, Incentive Concepts. Uh, we'll also be posting a recording of this webinar on uh, the PIP Connect YouTube channel and sharing that with everyone. So if you want to share it with uh, coworkers or clients or other partners, that would be wonderful. Uh, lastly, please take a few minutes to visit the PIP Connect website, uh, where you can find a lot of different information about premium and gifts and connect, connect with others. Uh, you can even book an appointment with Incentive Concepts if you want to, to learn about holiday gifting or gifting for any other occasion, whether it's back to school or the New Year's or whatever. Um, and then our next webinar, our last one of the year, is called Finish Strong, Incorporating Holiday Gifts into Year-End Appreciation Strategies. So more about holidays, Aaron. And that's with Jeffrey Brenner, who's the Director of Special Markets for SACO. And he's also an Executive Committee member of the Incentive Marketing Association. Alex, I know you're familiar with that group. Um, there is one question that came in from Rory. Are most merchandise programs drop ship or bulk ship? Uh, Aaron, maybe that's a good question for you to answer for Yeah. Rory. Yep, absolutely. Most are, most are going to be bulk ship. And so most of what we do are, um, you know, drop shipping right directly to your recipients. Um, in terms of bulk ship, uh, we'll do that from time to time, but typically it's centered around uh, if you're having a holiday Christmas office party and you want to hand out the rewards in person or you do an end of the year banquet to uh, honor everybody's years of service or things like that. But um we're set up to work both ways and, uh, you know, typically it's more of a, and especially now with, with as much remote workforce as there is, it's, it, it's going to be a dropship program. Okay. Thank you very much. And again, thank you, Alex. We appreciate your time. And Aaron, thank you. Uh, two amazing panelists uh, to everyone. Um, and then Mitchell, or, uh, Mitchell says, Aaron, let me know if you need my address for the gift, LOL. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Mitchell, we'll get right on that. Okay, thank you guys. Uh, Alex, thank you so very much. Thank you, Aaron, thank you so much. And attendees, yeah. thank you for joining us. Uh, that concludes the webinar for today. Uh, we hope you have a great rest of your week. And until the next time, we'll see you, see you later. Bye-bye.